guys, another guest. Uh, now I'm hosting the Fabian Struden from Miro. So I know a lot of you can work with the, 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 that tool. Uh, a lot of you hate that tool. A lot of you love that tool. So today I want to ask how Miro want to provide that AI implementation for the users or the customers and if it's better for us or it's taking some part of human touch to Miro. Uh, I'm great that you came to Katowice. What do you think about the city? Uh, did you have the chance or opportunity to, to, to look around? Yeah, yesterday we went to some nice restaurants with some other speakers and uh, it was nice to yeah, check out a little bit in the city. But most excited now meeting everyone here at the conference and I've already met a lot of people uh, that are local here and from Poland, from the um, startup community and business community in general. Can you say that there is like a big chance for startup who want to provide the AI tools for, for their business? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's obviously two sides to that. There's businesses using AI to develop new products, uh, give them an opportunity in the market to like, solve for problems that have never been solved in the same way. And then there's a big opportunity for businesses to adopt AI in their workflows mm -hmm. to help them accomplish their goals faster mm -hmm. at higher quality. When you in Miro noticed that the AI is the you know train, what you can you need to jump. We can all point to ChatGPT obviously having changed everything. Miro already invested in AI beforehand, and there was already capabilities that allowed users to cluster uh, sticky notes on the board um, or by sentiment. So uh, we already had a lot of our own investments happening. Of course, there was a dedicated team. Um, but then the introduction of ChatGPT uh, that just was like a wildfire. Everyone was talking about it, right? Their uh, unprecedented growth and adoption of users faster than any uh, other product in, in before with under. Yeah, it was just incredible. And I think that really inspired us and like showed us that there is a, there's a shift coming. There's a change where AI isn't just in the background, but it's a very much like a very present uh, assistance that's being offered to users, um, both in a, in a conversational way, but also, um, you know, with the ability to actually like iterate on generated responses. It has just completely changed everything. And I think that was also when I got super, super focused on this area and understood that there's huge potential to uh, really augment work uh, augment uh, human capability in a sense. I think that a lot of business owners uh, notice that there is a big chance, big mm. opportunity for them you know, to using AI into their businesses, but also they can feel a little bit overwhelmed mm. because how to start? Yes. How you uh, did yeah. it? Like how did, because of course you're a big company, but yeah. The, yeah. The, the start, the beginning was pretty the same. You yeah. need to take a first step. Yes. What was the first step in Euro? Yes. Uh, the first step um, was, I think we really took a, a look at our product and tried to understand where is the low hanging fruit, where are the opportunities, where we can demonstrate that with the assistance of AI, you can achieve your job faster, mm -hmm. right? I think we, from the beginning, stated that the goal is not for people to come to Miro to do AI. Mm -hmm. People have particular problems, particular goals, outcomes they want to achieve, and they open a mirror board for that, and they create content on a board for that, and they collect content on a board for it. Um, but then we realized there is low-hanging fruit opportunities to actually assist them in their work with the help of AI. And we started with very obvious uh, opportunities like uh, breaking a um, user story down into subsets of user stories, um, helping people write acceptance criteria, um, clustering sticky notes to understand emerging themes. So really like docking into how people already use Miro to achieve their job and then give them uh, very seamless um, support along that journey inside the product. Can you tell me during this process, you found the right people, all the people were learning through the process mm. and getting the knowledge you know, about the AI. What was the, mm. your approach? <laughs> and do you mean right people like in terms people of who, how the team is set up? Uh, maybe how to find the people who really uh, like, now it's a little bit easier because mm. AI it's not that, you know, like it's not the fresh mm. like it used to be. Mm. Uh, but 
how to find the like what is the right marks mm. you know, when you try to find the right guy to that to that AI job. For mm. But do you mean the person that comes to a mirror board to do a particular job or the team building the uh, capabilities? The second one. The second one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting question and also something that um, I think we are still learning the right answer to. Um, I think we, what we see is that now uh, large language models are available to rent. Uh, I think there's a, a trend that there's an opportunity to use what exists and just embed that into your product in a meaningful way. Um, I think what we are seeing is that there's potentially less custom models that are being built and trained uh, to achieve more general tasks. And I think that is, that is kind of changing also the opportunity, right? Instead of needing a data science team to build the whole product out, uh, there is opportunities now for product teams to also see what's out there, what models are available there, and um, just kind of just like as if the team would work with any other API, use that to enrich the product experience. I think then again, there is going to be limits, of course. There is going to be cases where specific models are needed, where more um, experience in this field is needed to, uh, to you know, really develop something very unique and next level. However, I see the big opportunity with what's already uh, readily available in terms of APIs, existing large language models, um, to already uh, get started and test it out in the product with the current availabilities. So. There is always like beautiful uh, perspective for AI, mm -hmm. but I want to ask you about the risk. Can can you say or share the risk what you um, notice? Like, okay, maybe that that level of using AI tools in our business could be could have a bad influence or mm. bad potential for some mm. some area yeah yeah i mean that's i think we all have to recognize that ai hallucinates uh, okay. that there is um you know it's not always perfect i think we must use it in a very responsible way um also from both the way we offer the product as well as those that use it to get a particular job done i think what we see with ai is that it can go into so many directions, right? With your prompting, uh, you can really take pretty much to where you want it to go. Mm -hmm. And if a company opens up prompting, uh, there is a lot of chance of, um, you know, generating results that are inaccurate or that um, kind of give false evidence to make a particular strategic decision. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, therefore, we must be careful uh, that we use it to accelerate our jobs, but not ever feel like it's doing something for us that we don't need to double check, that we don't need to validate. And in the end, I feel it is more an assistant, yet we are accountable for the results that we generate with it and put forward in our company as recommendations. And I think concrete examples here is if you use AI um, to synthesize research, for example, to build context for your team mm -hmm. so that they have some evidence to make product decisions on. It is critical here that we understand uh, or that the person who's providing this information or uh, synthesizing the research uh, really checks the facts that are being presented back to the source as well. So there is always a space for humans. <laughs> there is always a space for humans. I think there is absolutely, we see it more as a um, tool that helps you accelerate and increase the quality Okay. Um, it can guide you and aid you in your process, but we by no means see it as something that is replacing the job of the human. And I also believe that when it comes to ideation and innovation, mm -hmm. the person that's able to bring all of these relevant information, inputs and processes together and build a team around that vision, they're going to succeed. And AI, I don't believe, will take that away. What was the biggest success from your side? Like, if you look at your 
you know, process of implementation yeah. that tools, what was the biggest success? What was what had the biggest impact for, yeah. for example, newer yeah. users? Yeah, um, that's really exciting, right? We actually just announced a new product, Miro Assist, uh, which is the evolution of everything we have built so far. Um, we are very excited because we give the users much more control on how to apply AI in the context of their board content. And um, we're really excited for that step because I think that's really going to change how people will adopt it into their everyday workflows. And um, you ask, where have we seen success? I think it's very much around those that try to make sense of information. Uh, bringing, like, we know that many of our users in Miro bring their information to the board. They then cluster, they move stuff around mm -hmm. to understand uh, patterns that emerge from the data. And that's exactly where we believe um, large language models and Miro Assist really excels to give valuable insights and discover these emerging themes to define actionable next steps much faster than ever before. So, last question: How do you see uh, AI in couple of, like AI in collaboration tools evolving in the next decade? And what role does Miro aim to play in the landscape? Mm. Yeah, I think that's that's interesting. I think we can expect that all our products will have AI embedded mm. um, in in a in a yeah, I think that's. I think there's then a need still to bring all of these different streams of insights, informations together to maintain the big picture and uh, be able to stay, take a step back and, and just look at everything holistically. And I still believe that Miro, as it has done before, will continue to play that role. And uh, I think there's a sort of like getting everyone on the same page. I think in Miro, it's getting everyone on the same board. I think that will uh, continue to exist in the future. Okay, well. one, last one. Okay, last one, because that's very interesting. And that leads me to my previous question, what I didn't ask. Now, there is a viewpoint that AI might to, uh, make a collaboration too structured and stifle creativity. Mm -hmm. What Miro take on this? Like, you know, that's like a big yes. uh, um, fear of yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. How you, how you, what do you think about that? Like yeah. How are you going to uh, prevent that, 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 that happening? Stifling creativity. Yeah, I think it's all about having the right process, having the right context for your team and, and having clear objectives that you're trying to strive towards. And if they are set in a way uh, that they require creativity to get there, I believe that teams still will be able to do all of that. And I don't think AI will get in their way. I actually see it differently. Okay. I think AI can help to set that context, to arrive at the point where your whole team has the same information communicated in a very clear way by aggregating it with the help of AI yeah. into an actionable format. So instead of having all this data and information spread across every different tool and nobody is able to take that step back, have the big picture and then act on it. I believe AI can actually help that and then shorten the time to get creative together with the shared context. And that's what I'm really excited about. So I actually see it going the opposite way where people have more opportunity to be creative because the grunt work and the work of collecting things, achieving shared context is being shortened. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited about that part. Beautiful vision, <laughs> I hope, and cross the fingers. So thank you very much for the conversation, for the interview. Uh, Fabian Struden from Miro was my guest. So thank you guys and see you on the conference. <laughs> awesome, cool, very nice. Ciao. Ciao.